everyone, welcome back to Embroidery Tutorials where we are stitching through my 90 variation chain stitch sampler. That's getting easier to say every time. If you'd like to pick up a pattern for the large sampler that we are creating here, you can find one in my Etsy shop. We're currently on circle number three out of seven, so it is still real easy to stitch along with us and catch up. These videos don't come out every single day, so you have plenty of time to watch the previous one learn a few new stitches, and be caught up for those difficult ones that are coming at the end. Like I said, we are currently on circle three out of seven. There's 10 variations on this circle, and we've already covered three of them. Today we're going to be doing four in one video, but do not worry because they are all exceptionally similar to each other. They're just all slightly different enough that they get separate names and are considered different stitches. We're gonna start out with just plain old twisted chain stitch. For this, you're gonna start by coming up on the line and then you're gonna go back down a little bit off the line. You can do either side that you want. I'm going towards the inner side of the circle, but you really only wanna be a couple millimeters away. If you go too far away, you're moving into barred chain stitch and that's a whole different thing. So you just wanna be really close, but not up against where you came out. And then before you come up through that loop like you would for regular chain stitch, you're going to flip your loop over once so that it's twisted. Again, you can do this in either direction. You could switch off and do both directions as you go around the circle. I've been flipping it with the outside or rather the one that's not on the line, that leg being on top. Again, you could do either way. It's totally up to you, play around with it. So after you've flipped your loop over, you're gonna come back up through the fabric and go through the loop, just like in regular or chain stitch and then you're carrying on from there following this same pattern again going down slightly on the inside of the line twisting that loop to create the flip and then coming up on the line going through the loop and moving on from there Now for twisted chain stitch, we were coming up on the same side of the line through the whole thing. So that little twisted foot was always on the same side. We're now gonna do alternating twisted chain stitch cause yeah, I'm considering that a different stitch. And for this, it's the exact same thing, but you're gonna switch off which side of the line you come up on. So first you can come up on the outside of the line, just a few millimeters away again. Make sure you twist that loop to create the nice little twist in the base there and then come up on the line with your needle going through the loop and this time go down on the inside of the line and so on and so forth. Again, really easy, anyone can master this and it gives this really nice texture. If you were ever needing to stitch a barbed wire fence for any reason, I don't know why you would necessarily need to that often, but if you did, this would be a great stitch to look like a little barbed wire fence. Big surprise, this is pretty much exactly the same thing as twisted chain stitch. We are just creating a longer leg where that twist is it's gonna be just like shooting one little leg out to the side. Why? Because, because why not? So this one's gonna be stitched on the triple circle here. The inside line is your main one and the outer lines are where your feet should lie. So as we do the original barred chain stitch, it only uses one of these outer lines. Again, you could do the inside or the outside. I'm doing the inside, but it is only using one because we aren't alternating yet. 
of course. So what you're gonna do here, again, you're coming up on your main line, you're coming up right in the center, and then you're going back down on your outside line. Now you can choose how long you want the leg of this stitch to be. I like to make it even with where I came up so that it's nice and neat for this plain stitch, but you could make it really short. If you make it too short, you're technically doing twisted chain stitch, or you could make it really long. You could go super dramatic. Maybe you'll have a reason to do so in some design in the future. Play around with it again, do whatever makes you happy. But basically we're doing the same thing as that twisted chain stitch. After we've gone down on that outer line, we are flipping in either direction that loop so that we get a twist in it. Again, I'm going to be doing it with that long leg on top but you can go either way or you can switch off if you want. And then we're coming back up on the middle line with our needle going through the top of that loop and then moving on to the next stitch. Again, going down on the outside line, whichever side you've chosen, flipping that stitch over to create the twist and coming up on the middle line going through the loop of the stitch. Carry on that way all the way to the end and then we'll start alternating. Okay, and last up, we're gonna do alternating barred chain stitch. You guessed it, you're just gonna alternate which side the leg is on, super easy. So go ahead and start with the opposite of what you were doing before. Come up from the center. I'm gonna go down on the outer ring because I was doing inner for my previous section. And then after you've created that first stitch, do the opposite. Go down on the inner ring for your next one and you'll get this lovely back and forth. This could also be a pretty good barbed wire fence, but like with some really long barbs a very dangerous barbed wire fence. Honestly, if anyone has ever used any of these stitches for any kind of design, I would love to know what you use them for. Another idea, the thorny stem of a rose. This could make a great thorny stem depending on how big you want the thorns to be, either twisted or barred, it could look really good. Get creative. The more you think about it, the more you find really creative ways to use these different stitches instead of just doing endless combinations of straight stitches to get a look that you want. Once you really start learning more and more stitches, you can start associating different designs and different objects with those stitches so that you end up with some really creative embroidery designs that have a lot of texture in them instead of just having a series of straight stitches combined into a certain shape. And that's it for today. Four super simple stitches. I had to say that five times before I could do it without messing up. These are all so easy. I hope you'll grab a pattern or just a piece of fabric and some needles and thread and follow along with us. I think you'll really like these. Thank you so much for joining us and I will see you next time. We're gonna be filling in that outer ring on circle three to finish it off. Three really interesting stitches, including magic chain stitch, which is a favorite every time I have showed it. I will see you then. Thanks so much for joining us today.